remember what the haters talking about. What's up, family? I just watched an interesting video on Vlad TV. DJ Quicksilver was interviewing former drug dealer Maurice King, a.k.a. Peanut King. They were talking about how he started in the drug game in the 1970s and his eventual prison bid, which began in 1982. He talked about the origin of his name, establishing his reputation in Baltimore, and the values he upheld while hustling. Peanut King also talked about purchasing a DeLorean back in the 1980s. He said it was all part of a marketing tactic. When asked what made you want to get in the game, he gave a very familiar and predictable answer. Growing up in poverty, being underprivileged. I can relate. Here's the deal. You know how they say desperate situations cause for desperate measures? The thing that I learned over time is whatever's going on in your life, even if you're desperate, don't panic. You see, that drug gang, that's that panic button. Uh, uh. And when you panic, you are almost certainly going to make a mistake that you regret. You may make several. This guy went to jail in 1982, got a 50 year bid and just came home. That's a lot of years. All that time he was sitting in jail. He gets out and the interviewer asked him, do you have any regrets? And he said, nah. He said he felt like it was all worth it. So, you get out in the streets, you sell this product to your community that is probably the top contributor to destroying your community, or well, one of the top contributors to destroying your community. You're breaking up families. Mothers and fathers are going to prison. Mothers and fathers are getting strung out on drugs. Kids are being bo are born strung out on drugs. This product that you're selling. Now you say, because he said that the reason why he was doing it is because he wanted to help his family get in a better position. He wanted to help his community. But he did admit to being a little naive. He said that he didn't have all the facts. He didn't have all the information at the time. And so he thought he was doing the right thing. He admitted that it was contradictory to say that you want to help your family and help your community uh, by making some money, but at the same time, you're destroying your community by selling this dope, selling this crack cocaine. I mean, I think we can all agree, no matter how desperate or poor that we've been, that crack cocaine has been a major contribution, a contribution to the detriment of the black community. It has done a lot of damage. And for dude to sit in jail for decades and come out and say he felt like it was all worth it because he, he wouldn't be the person he is today because he learned so much. So basically he's saying, for my salvation, I'll sacrifice all of these people in my community that I say I want to help, and I'll sacrifice my family for my own salvation. Because that's what I hear. I'm hearing he's sacrificing everybody else for his own salvation. Otherwise, if it's me, I'm going to say, no, I don't think it was worth it, not even for myself. If I had to give up jumping out there, and, and, and being conscious of what I'm doing, and I know this is what I'm doing, if I gotta give up my own salvation, if I gotta give up my own peace 
of mine for the betterment of the community. That's the type of person I am. You know, for my family, to make the sacrifice for the family, that's the type of person that I am. So I can't ride with that. And I know some people are looking at dude like he's some type of hero, calling him a legend and stuff like that. But man, after that many decades, I would think that a person would have a little bit more insight. You know, like, I have no problem with Vlad doing these interviews where he's interviewing uh, former drug dealers and guys from the streets and stuff like that. If they can bring something to the table to educate the youngst youngsters and give them information to put them on the right track. But if it's, okay, we're going to interview this dude and this dude is going to put this information out and... You know, he sounds just like a damn 21-year-old. Uh, what's the use? What's the purpose of that? Now, I know that uh, this other guy, uh, DJ Quicksilver, interviewed him. Vlad didn't interview him. And I know that when he said it was all worth it, I'm sure Vlad would have followed up with something else. DJ Quicksilver did not do that for whatever reason. But I would have had to ask him, how so? How was it worth it? All of those years, I'm sure he was sitting in jail when he lost some family members. I'm sure his, his mom and his dad probably passed away while he was in prison. He missed, his, if he had any children, he missed his children growing up. He missed the life lessons that he could have gave them and protected them from certain situations. Growing up in Baltimore especially, I know if he had children, they definitely needed him. Even if he didn't have children, he had nieces and nephews. What about those people in the community, those children in the community that he said he was trying to help? They needed that guidance. They needed that help. They needed men, real men in the community to help them navigate through that terrain. So even if he didn't have his own children, what about the children of the community, which makes sense to me because it does take a village to raise one child. So... I'm not feeling I'm not feeling that statement at all. You know, maybe he spoke out of turn or something, but to say it was all worth it because he learned a lesson, a valuable lesson, lesson and he wouldn't be who he is, that's ridiculous to me. I'd rather if if if, if my community could be thriving and be in a in better shape and we we would didn't have all that death and destruction and we didn't get all these junkies from the crack era and all of this mass incarceration which which was not solely uh you can't put that solely on uh the the people in the hood because we know congress you know the president and they was doing their thing the politicians were doing their thing to make sure that mass incarceration came to fruition but I'm talking about the people in the hood, the part that we played, our part, the people in the hood, the people that moved to work. We got to acknowledge that and we got to be real about that. I'm not with giving somebody like that a pass just because uh, they, they're old or they did some time. They sold a lot of crack. That shit don't mean nothing to me. You sold a lot of crack. You sold a lot of drugs. Who you sold them to? And what did you do? What did the community get out of it? What did your people get out of it? What happened in the process of you getting all this money? You know, getting this recognition, buying the DeLorean. What happened to the people in the process of your come up? Peanut King was asked, what do he think the biggest difference is in the drug dealers of the 70s and the new age guys on the streets today? And he said, probably values. He did acknowledge that the new age guys are doing the best they can with what they know. And that's pretty much nothing because the OGs were not there to pass the game on. They were locked up or dead. And I don't care how gangster you are, you can't raise babies from the pen. You be sitting there trying to tell your kids what to do. You better listen to your mama. And look, I don't want to see you out there doing this no more. And uh, you make sure you get in the house by 7 o'clock every night. Kid, be like, eh, psh, you tripping. 
I'm just not feeling this whole thing what dude is saying he felt it was worth it. Maybe I'm missing something. But what say you? Drop a comment. And by the way, George Washington Carver is the peanut king. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?